Welcome back to The Law Unscripted, where we talk about all of the things about the law and the legal system that you never knew. Never understood. And no one ever told you. Welcome. I am Virginia Tarani. And I'm Chelsea Rogers. We are with Tarani Law LLC because you never need a lawyer till you do. Okay, everybody. This week, we are going to be talking about jurisdiction and venue. Super salacious and exciting. (laughs) Right? I know you're already on the edge of your seat. It's my uh, least favorite. It's Civ Pro, but it's it is interesting. I'm in my redemption round for Civ Pro. We're in <laughs> Virginia Civil Procedure right now. Yes, that's it. so for law terms. Law, yes. law students speak Civ Pro is Civil Procedure. Yes. Um, and for all of our friends who are not law students, nor should you be, or do you need to be? It's just the rules. It's just rules. Lots and lots and of how rules. How do you go to court? It's court rules. That's what Civil Procedure is. Yes. Is what you do to follow the rules of the court. That's what that is. And our oh-so-exciting topic of jurisdiction and venue, like, what the heck is that? Layman's terms. Okay, Come jurisdiction on. is the, the area, the, the type of cases that you have control over, that you get to make decisions over. So, like, if a court has jurisdiction over you, it's probably your local court or, like, a bankruptcy court, right? Yeah, <laughs> jurisdiction and venue, the very and, oh, quick yeah, and venue is yeah. yeah, easy, easy terms for them. If you're looking at it from someone who's never heard these terms before, has no idea how they even apply to the law, yes. it's where you take your case to court. Oh, that's a much easier way there you to go. explain it. Done. Okay, that was quick. Look, all done. <laughs> so I can just, like, take my case to the Supreme Court, right? Right, go that's on. It. That's it. where you want it, you got it. I was it. in a car accident straight to the Supreme Court. <laughs> If only it worked that way, or thank God it doesn't work that way. I was going to say, I might would... actually agree with the law about one thing, about not having that as an option. Yeah, not not every court does need to go to the Supreme Court. So. Oh, no, no, no. So yeah, the, the big question yes. is, where do you take your case to court? Yep. How does it get, how does Johnny Depp's trial get, get over to Fairfax? To Fairfax, Virginia, they're in Hollywood. How does Tesla's trial, how is Elon Musk doing San Francisco? Why is that there? And they had the ability to request to be in Texas. Why would he go there? Right. Why do cases end up in the jurisdictions, in the places, in the courts that they end up in? Why do they end up in a specific town, city, state, a specific type of court? Because we have different types of courts. Why is it in federal or state court? Uh, right. Circuit or district or what are you looking at? Mm-hmm. So that is the that is the topic of today. Um, for everyone who doesn't know us, what we try to do is really talk about the law and the legal system yeah. um, in in better terms as like, yes. nobody tells you this stuff. Right. And if you ever needed to know or wondered why is this happening, then hopefully this is the little conversation for you. We do yeah, hit- We went to law school so you didn't have to. <laughs> Yes, we did. Just for you. Um, that's why we, we <laughs> have spent all of this money. That's it. I just was really nosy. I just wanted to know what was happening in there, you, you know? <laughs> wanted to know about jurisdiction? That's it. And I venue. was like, now that I have heard this, all my questions are answered. No, it really did, for me at least, create 18 million more questions, which you got thrown at um, every Friday for the past, like, almost two years now. And now we're throwing them at you. Yes. Yeah. So... I have 17 years experience as an attorney. Chelsea is a law student. Hopefully in the next year or so we'll be an attorney. I believe, I strongly believe she's doing everything that she needs to. And one of the things that we're going to do, so for, yeah. for our listeners who have been with us mm-hmm. for a little bit, um, I think this is episode seven. Amazing. Is it really? I think so. It's either six or seven, but I think it's number seven. Wow. Um, yeah. That feels wild. It really does. But for those who have been with us, I'm going to give you a little teaser yes. that we are starting with a new subset of this podcast. And you are going to be seeing, especially for the law students and the undergrad yes. students who are more interested in the fine legal points, um, rather than just a conversation of how it actually works in the real world, which I think is really important. Helpful. But we're going to have one called the legal briefs. Yes. So law and scripted legal briefs. And that's where we're going to take 8 to 15 minutes um, mm-hmm. each week to give you a down and dirty of yeah. one of these legal topics so that you can have more of a, almost like a PowerPoint presentation on it, yeah. where it's the basics, here's how it is. Um, so for those of you who are more streamlined on the law student s- section of yeah. it, stay tuned for some of that. And I think we're also going to walk through the bar with Chelsea on that. So that's our plan. You'll get a study along yeah. with me. Um, I'm sure it'll be full of 
tears and stress, but it'll be a good time. Join me. I'm going to have a great time right? watching someone else take the bar. <laughs> right, have because you don't time. have to take it. <laughs> no, I just get to watch you take it and yes. laugh at, I mean, help but, you. But that's what I'm saying. I feel yeah. like this is the best study session here because once I learn the practice, for me, it's easier to understand the practical and then go back and learn the finer points. Like if I know the the vibe, like what is the vibe of like Civ Pro or the vibe of jurisdiction, you can usually suss out the the bullet points. Well, if you understand what's happening. Conceptually. The, yes. Yeah. If you can put it together in an overall view of, oh, wow, that may be why I want to take it to Fairfax, Virginia. I can learn the rules. Right. Then you can figure out how to get it there. Or when you're looking at a bar problem, mm-hmm. what what do you buzzwords do you need to be yes. finding and saying, oh, that's what I'm looking for and pull those out and put it together in an answer. And this is why Virginia will be helping me through the bar. <laughs> we're like, going to walk through the bar with you. Dear bar things, here we go. the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> You're on and the I'm vibe gonna... <laughs> is just off here. Okay. <laughs> that is not a legitimate law school answer or answer to the court <laughs> by anyone. <laughs> I mean, fun and entertaining, but probably won't get you very far. Yes. Um, unfortunately, I do behave myself when I am doing real law school things. But okay, so this... Yeah. There's a lot with jurisdiction and venue, right? Surprisingly so. So there's not so much that it's going to be overwhelming or a lot. And I'm not going to hit all of the the fine points. We want to do an overall, let's hit it, right? get the gist of it, um, and come back if you want for other, yeah, other episodes, smaller absolutely. versions of it. But when a regular person goes to court, they they don't always think before they need to go to court, oh, where would I go to court? Right. But honestly, you need to think about it. it be- especially when you have options, Right. And you do. Mm-hmm. Most people consider, and for the majority, the the default rule mm-hmm. is you go to court in the county you're in. Right. Okay. The, the default rule, if you're thinking, well, where would I go to court? Your first thought should be, it's the city or county. Where do I live? state that I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's default. And for probably about six, you know, two thirds of the time, that's probably true. Right. And that, that is, is personal jurisdiction. That is personal jurisdiction. The city, the county, the state that you are in has jurisdiction over you. They right. kind of, you're sitting in their lap. Yeah. You're sitting there. They, yep. you pay taxes to them. They make you pay taxes. They take your money so they can put you in their courts. Your taxes pay their salary, but no, <laughs> but, but kind of. Yeah, kind of. Um, so yeah, so think about who you pay taxes to. So mm-hmm. the federal government, um, which don't think of that for court because the feds would have jurisdiction over you no matter what. Yes. And for their laws, they do. Okay, so think about it yes. for laws. Federal laws apply everywhere. Exactly. And trump state laws. Yes. So when we're talking about just um, drugs, right? right? There's the federal drug laws, which mm-hmm. still prohibit the sale of marijuana. Yes. But then there's the state laws. So when you're thinking about, well, I pay taxes to the federal government. Right. Okay. Well, the federal law still applies to you. Right. But you wouldn't necessarily always go to a federal court. Yes. So you pay taxes to the feds. They take money from you. Mm -hmm. You still have to obey the feds. But when it comes to going to a courthouse, to a court, filing a lawsuit or being brung up on brought brung up brought up on charges. Gosh, when you're catching charges, when, yeah, <laughs> when you catch a charge, uh, you usually go to your state, local, city, or county court. Yes. Okay. And when you do that, are you in district court or circuit court? Depends on. So let's let's do it for criminal versus civil. Yeah. So for a criminal charge most mostly mm-hmm. we're looking at state crimes right okay there are the federal rules but the feds don't generally get involved in your normal traffic tickets right right they they don't care they it's have, your local police officers yes. who are you know you're speeding here's a ticket mm-hmm. or you know whatever it is yeah you're speeding you robbed the target down the street right it's your local cops who come by it's yeah. not your federal the dea doesn't come out when <laughs> you know there's been shoplifting at target right. they just don't they're right. they're larger organizations i mean in theory they could though right like they could do it it's just in would theory. never happen yeah in theory they could because there are federal laws that right say like don't federal steal. authorities have the authority to go into any state in theory obviously this is not what's happening and theoretically, 
the sale of marijuana could make an arrest on it. Yes, because that is a federal law. Exactly. Federal laws usually, though, don't involve like straight theft. Um, there yes. are, though, there's the the RICO laws, the, the racketeering mm-hmm. laws, which have overall theft within right. them. Um, some embezzlement charges, especially yes. if it's a government entity that you're embezzling from. Even simpler, I know this, if you mm-hmm. trespass on the White House lawn. That's feds. That, no, that's completely federal. One of the mm-hmm. hypos that we did for my class last semester was a plea deal that ended up being about somebody who unfortunately was mentally ill and repeatedly trespassed on the White House lawn. And so it was a federal offense. Yeah, so you go to federal court. And it really was, he didn't do anything aside from trespass. Like it really was just a trespassing, but because of obviously you can't trespass near the White House. And that's federal property. So right. if it's federal property, you go to federal court. Yeah. The same as I remember when I first started practicing in 2005, I was in Alexandria, Virginia. Yes. And I was a criminal defense attorney but I only I only practiced state. I did mm-hmm. not do federal. I've never been barred in the Eastern District of Virginia, which is the federal jurisdiction. Yeah. And I still remember being shocked when someone called me and asked for my services f- for a traffic ticket in the Eastern District of Virginia. Federal it's, court? It's like, well, you must be kidding. It's like, you've got the courts mixed up. You, you must be. be in Alexandria down the street, yeah. right? Because the, the city courthouse is... Are you playing a joke on me, right? <laughs> I really did, and I was so naive. But that's what I thought. I was like, you can't go to federal court a for traffic a traffic issue. But sure enough, when it happened, it was park police. It was yep. the federal parks, the national parks. Yes. In Alexandria that he'd been driving through. Wow. And he had gotten a driving ticket while passing through the park system. And because it was the park system, even though it was Alexandria, it was still the feds. So he ended up in the Eastern District of Virginia federal court. And that's why he, so your normal traffic ticket. (laughs) But they're not. Really? Is it that common? Because it's common. It's the park police. The park police, they catch drunk drivers. They catch trespassers. They catch speeders. I mean, it is a normal park police. Okay. Just like it's the Alexandria City Police Department. It's just on federal property rather than so it's it's somewhat joint jurisdiction, right? Yes. So if it's concurrent, in, right? Concurrent. Look at that. That is a law school term. That's I a came wonderful to my brain term. Somehow. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Right. So if you're in the city of Alexandria, yes. well, the city of Alexandria could have jurisdiction over you, yeah. but if you you're in a portion controlled by federal property, right, then it's federal jurisdiction. Yeah. So, so yes, in general, most of your traffic tickets, most of your trespassing, that it's sort of thing be would in. be state court. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are times where it would hop over where what you and I would see is a lower level offense right. of a traffic ticket, a yeah. shoplifting, a trespassing, um, a general possession of some kind of drug. That is normally only seen on normally in when it's a federal property, a crime committed oh, on federal yeah. property yeah, yeah, yeah. versus, you know, the feds aren't rounding up everyone who's it's not efficient. A joint, right. Exactly. It's not efficient for them, even though they in theory could do it. They could. To really be out, like you said, you know, seeing who has a joint in their locker, right? Like Yeah. Okay, so that's sort of the criminal for federal. You're usually talking about things on federal property. Mm-hmm. Now, and also, okay, so that's the federal side of the criminal. Mm -hmm. Now, for the criminal in the state side. If I get arrested Mm -hmm. in Maryland, what happens? If you get arrested, you go to district court. Okay. Um, This is in Maryland or Virginia. Mm -hmm. You go to district court. Most states have a level of a what's called a lower court or an and a higher court. Mm -hmm. Usually the lower courts are called district courts. Uh, New York has a really weird naming system for their court. <laughs> yeah, what's their lowest court? Isn't it like the Supreme Court? Uh-huh. And that is their like entry level, like trial court. Um, New York is just weird with a lot of respects to the laws, but that's one of them. Yeah. So you read a case and this is done. This is like first year and it was like in New York and I'm like reading it and I'm like, this. how is this already in the New York Supreme Court? And it was like, that's their trial court. That is. But it's not stupid because look at how law and order. Know? How would you 
No, look at Law & Order. I challenge you. Yes. When anybody goes to Law & Order, these, they have the boom, boom, you know, yes. the, the sound. Like Supreme Court of it like- It says in the Supreme Court of New York. Yes. And growing up, I was like, how can that be? How They're are they doing, doing every court? <laughs> trials. Yes. The Supreme Court of New York must be so big. Because I thought of Supreme Court as, as the highest court in each state. And yes. generally it is. Yes. Generally. But there is no standardized sort of naming convention. States Correct. can kind of call it whatever they want. And New York kind of took the opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. So their lowest court, their district level court, is called the Supreme mm -hmm. Court. In and appeals court and then... Yes, I can't remember the different levels, but there are usually three levels, yeah. three or four levels. You have like a trial level, an appeals mm -hmm. level, and sort of the, the top, like Supreme, right? Well, four. I would say. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, a, I didn't add in circuit. A, a lower trial level, a higher trial level, mm -hmm. an immediate, intermediate appeals level, and a top appeals level. So those are yeah. generally the four. Now, with that, stick in another court that is either a part of one of, a part of or in addition to one of the lower courts in each state is some kind of domestic court. Right. Like a family law court. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the juvenile, which is a whole other. Right. Right. So, for instance, in Virginia, there's the district court mm -hmm. and that hears for crimes, mm -hmm. it hears all misdemeanors mm -hmm. and all preliminary hearings for felony cases. It also then hears all civil matters that are under $50,000. We did cover that in class on Tuesday. Yes. Wow. Like I said. Really? This is why I suggested this topic. It was a really selfish okay. reason. Let me just review my class real quick. <laughs> So Chelsea is studying for class, which we applaud. We hope you are too. If you're at American University or yeah. any others um, right now, especially in Virginia, they're doing Virginia civil procedure yeah. classes because you're getting ready to study for the bar. Um, and that no, that's good to know. So that's part of what we did. Um, we spent a little, a lot of time sort of talking about the, how the juvenile court works, which people are interested in. There were a lot of questions, but like for me, I'm like, we're probably not going to go into this much depth is really on the bar. You don't think so. They were getting into like nitty gritty type of cases, how they would get sort of parsed out. Maybe, I mean, maybe they will. I don't know. So, so a Jew in, okay. So in Virginia, <laughs> Sorry, no, this off. you haven't though, because it all goes in and it's tying yeah. into this weird extra court, so to right. speak, that could be district, could be circuit. So generally the district court is Misdemeanors and preliminary hearings and mm -hmm. civil cases below 50,000. Right. There's a little bit more nuance than that, but that's the general rule. Yes. Circuit court is considered the higher trial court. So felonies. Felonies. Jury it, trials. Really if it's a jury trial, yeah. it's in circuit court. Really expensive civil cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything over 50,000. Right. Um, you can take a case below 50,000. Mm -hmm to circuit court. You have to have different other parameters. Mm -hmm. They have to be different types of cases or like a wrongful death. A, a wrongful well, that would generally apply because you assume it's over 50,000. Yes. You'd assume that you'd be suing for right, more right, than right. that. Um, but there are some contractual cases like mm -hmm. if you're suing for specific performance, then that is a circuit court case. That makes sense. Versus just a monetary issue. Yeah. Um so Circuit court is jury trial. Mm -hmm. Circuit court is felonies. Circuit court is high dollar right. cases. But in Virginia, you also have another trial court. You have a third called the Juvenile Domestic Relations JDR. Court. Yeah, JDR. <laughs> that's what we call it. Yeah. Is the JDR court. And that is another district level court. Mm -hmm. So it's got the same area, so to speak, as the regular general district court. Which makes sense. So there's the general district court that's operating at the same level mm -hmm. as the juvenile domestic relations court. Yes. And that means they both can hear misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. Neither can have jury trials. Right. So anytime there's a jury trial request, mm -hmm. anytime there's an appeal of a lower court hearing and decision... Both of those courts can be appealed to the circuit court. Right. And that's when they hit. Um, 
juvenile domestic relations is usually strictly juveniles, family. Mm-hmm. Um, they will hear protective order cases. Right. They will hear domestic abuse cases. Mm-hmm. They will hear chins petitions, which are child in need of services, yes. which we talked about a, last a, week. Was it last week? Yeah. With That's the a, Virginia school shooting case. Yes. And it's, in, yeah, in Maryland, it's the... It's the CINA, CINA, but same thing. Mm-hmm. So Maryland is is CINA, the Child in Need of Assistance, mm-hmm. and Virginia, it's Child in Need of Services or, or Supervision, Yeah, is different family services. That is more kind of like a restorative justice type of orientation than a Correct. Dam- this is where you know we're handling damages or punishment. That's right. Is that sort of the the premise behind it? Absolutely. So those would be taken care of in Virginia in the district Mm -hmm. courts. But if there's any kind of felonies, if it's a juvenile who has been charged with a crime, generally it goes through the JDR. Mm -hmm. But if they're charged as an adult, it goes up to circuit. Right. So it automatically gets transferred up. Right. Custody matters can be taken care of through the JDR. Yeah. But... A lot of divorce petitions, all the divorce petitions go through the circuit court. Really? That's my understanding. It's interesting. I, I don't do that. family law. I haven't. I used to. Yeah. A very small portion. Never, ever, ever. Of my practice. <laughs> a very small piece a very long time ago. Um, and at the time, if I recall, and I hope that it is still the same. Yeah. Is you have to go through the circuit court in order to do divorce hmm. in Virginia. That's interesting. Okay. So we've talked about sort of the hmm. state and the federal Yes. So if I, I mean, this will work in Maryland or Virginia, if I get arrested for some misdemeanor, I'm going to start in district court, a state misdemeanor, right? Yes. Gonna for be a in- state misdemeanor, <laughs> yeah. you would start in district court. And if I go to trial, and it would be a bench trial because there's no jury. Correct. In district court. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. So we're starting in district. Mm-hmm. So Maryland, it would be the district court. In Virginia, it would be the general district court. Right. Yes. Okay. I'm like thinking through this so we can sort of explain. So get arrested for a misdemeanor or something low level. I don't know. Maybe I shoplifted from Target, like a very small amount of whatever. Mm -hmm. Go to general district court or district court, depending on where we are. It'll be a bench trial, will not be a jury trial. Correct. What if I lose? What are my options? Depends on which which state you're in. Okay. So Um, we're just going to say I lose. I'm found guilty. The judge in... Maryland. Maybe I went in both. I did it in Maryland and Virginia. (laughs) You have one in each court. Which can can happen. You are better off in Maryland, I will say, um, as a defendant. Can I appeal it? You can can appeal in either jurisdiction. And where would I go in each if I did appeal it? In each of them, you would go up to the circuit court. So whatever appeal you put in, you put in from district court to circuit court. You were more likely, though... Um, to succeed, uh, succeed isn't the best way to say it. You are guaranteed a new trial in Virginia. Really? From, from scratch? De novo? From scratch. De novo case. Absolutely from scratch. So, so that means that nothing that happened in the first trial, the, the new judge will not see that, which is a fascinating concept to me that you can really do that. Right. You, you literally start over. You can ask for a jury trial at that point. Or you can circuit. have, yeah, you can have just another bench trial as if you had never had one before. You have no record. You have no transcript. Because that's another thing. I don't mm-hmm. know if people know this. I was fascinated by this, that there are courts of record and there are courts that are not of record. And essentially all that means is that in a court of record, it's not a transcript exactly, but there's some mm-hmm. sort of documentation of the proceeding and courts that are that don't have a record there's not so correct. there's nothing for like an appellate level court to review that's correct and in virginia both of the district courts the jdr and mm-hmm. the general district they are courts not of record which the jdr makes a lot of sense to me of like you mm-hmm. don't want sort of any of these things being like public record foia would be able to like Okay. That's a whole that's different a di- thing. Yeah, I mean. it's, it is different, but that's good that you mentioned that because they sound like the, they're the same term, but they're not. Right. So courts not of record mean that they don't transcribe mm-hmm. the court proceedings. Right. Not that there is no record Well, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant at all. Just mm-hmm. that there would be no transcript of the proceedings. I think that 
Not by the court. Right. You can bring your own stenographer. You can bring your own court reporter if you want to pay for your own. And you can make a transcript of the proceedings. I didn't know you could do that. You can. I mean, who would? But like, I didn't know you could. No, it does make sense in some cases. Yeah. Um, In some contentious cases from the district court that you believe will be appealed Mm -hmm. into the circuit court, it really does make sense. Or if there's a witness testifying that you want to know what they testified to on exactly in lower court and might need them for upper court. It may, there are times that it makes sense, but the court's yeah. not going to do it for right, you. Right, right, right. Okay, so if I, so we've said this, I, mm-hmm. both in Maryland and Virginia, I lost at my bench trial. I say, I'm appealing it. We go to circuit court. I could have a jury or I could just keep the bench trial situation. In Virginia, yes. In Virginia. What about Maryland? In Maryland, you don't have that same right. Okay. You have the right to appeal, but your appeal is... Not de novo. You don't get to start over gotcha. from scratch just okay. because you appeal. The appeal is on the record. So Maryland is a court of record. Okay. <laughs> they have um, audio recordings going yeah. constantly in the courtroom. So if you were in the courtroom, you were being recorded. Um, mm-hmm. And you can actually purchase the audio transcript. It's a bear. I hate to do it, but you can. Okay. Um, so it is a court of record, meaning your record goes up on appeal. Yeah. You cannot start over. Your record goes up. It is reviewed to decide if judicial error was made. So it's really not about, right, like, so you're saying in Virginia when you're starting fresh, this judge knows nothing about your case. Whatever (laughs) happens on that day or days in court is all that judge is going to see about the case. Correct. Versus, like you're saying, in Maryland, they're going to theoretically read through all of that. Oh, they have to. That's their appeal is they're reviewing is, is there a judicial error that's been made? Right. Is it a, you know, a problem of factor law? And if so... Mm -hmm then it will be, you know, turned down. But unless something egregious has happened in your case, if you just didn't like the decision, Mm -hmm. it's very unlikely that it's going to be turned over. Which makes, I mean, it kind of makes sense to me. So at least that's the civil efficiency side. Um, It's it's fun in in Maryland where, at least in Montgomery County, if you want to trial a jury trial in a misdemeanor. You can't ask for a jury. Um, you can or you can't? You can. Okay. I was going to say, isn't that like constitutional? It is. You yeah, absolutely okay. can. But they have people, I, I love it in Virginia, um, when where I practiced in Virginia, you would then just set up a time and a day to come mm-hmm. back and go to a jury trial um, in Virginia. In Montgomery County, when I first came, I was shocked to learn that if you asked, and I I, <laughs> I was so glad I saw someone else do it first. Okay. Um, <laughs> Because I was so surprised to learn that if you asked for one in Montgomery County um, for your traffic, whatever it was, your DUI, then they would say, okay, here's your ticket, essentially. And you walk over to the circuit court across the street and there are juries waiting. And so you would go to jury trial right then. That, then, that day. That's kind of fun. That's dramatic. I like it's the very law dramatic. Is sometimes very dramatic. And I do enjoy <laughs> that. Okay. So in our yes. hypo. So mm-hmm. we go to circuit court mm-hmm. and this is first, you know, I'm, I'm stealing things from target. So now we're at circuit court, say they agree with the lower court that they, you know, in Maryland, there's no judicial error in Virginia. They were like, eh, yeah, you did it. You're guilty. Do I have any options to appeal at that point? You do have some okay. options, but they are so limited. At that the point, farther it's really up about- you get- at that point, it has to be about like a misinterpretation of the law or like judicial error or like incompetence of counsel or something like that. Yeah, there has to be something out of the ordinary. Um, okay. Not just that you don't like that you lost. Right. So and that there's means- so many people who don't like that they lost. People don't like to lose. And in this system, one side has to yes. win and one side has to lose. Adversarial, which has its pros and cons. Mm-hmm. So what type of cases... I mean, this will probably be true for both states, both, you know, criminal and civil. Do the highest courts usually get their hands on? Wow. It has been a long time. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm no. like asking so many questions. Please stop apologizing. This is why we're doing this show. <laughs> and honestly, I may need to brush up a little bit here. You may know some of the answers more than I would. I know. So in Virginia, the Virginia Appeals Court, mm-hmm. um, they refuse a lot. Yeah. Um, and then... Sometimes you can jump over the appeals court to go to the Virginia Supreme Court. Right. But I can't remember at the current time which cases go where. I know one is more 
apt to be taken for criminal matters, Mm -hmm. um, where the other is less likely to be taken. And some can go into the Virginia Appeals Court and then also up to the Virginia Supreme Court. But I do not remember those rules right now. That's a very, yeah, that's a very like in the weeds. But I think we've gone through- We can pick that up. We can, we'll come back to that. Okay, so I think we've kind of gone through sort of state (laughs) what that jurisdiction looks like. And like you said, it's usually where you live. But it could be- these are ones I get confused on when we're working all the time. Okay. Plaintiff lives in this county of Maryland. Oh. Defendant lives in this county of Maryland. They were both not in the counties they live in. And get into an accident in the third county of Maryland. Which court is this discovery going to? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love these. So these are the the civil cases. Yes. So it'd be so a traffic criminal, accident. Yes. Lawsuits, how many lawsuits are filed every day yes. in so many courts, and especially state courts, a lot of traffic accidents we've talked about. Um, in deciding a basic civil lawsuit, mm-hmm. the usual questions are one of two things. Okay. Where does the defendant live? Mm-hmm. And or where did the accident happen? Okay. Where was this wrongful act committed? Right. Where did I slip and fall? Where did I get hit? Mm-hmm. Um where did I get bit by a dog? Right. These are, where did the contract get breached? These are the questions of where did the act happen? And almost without a doubt across the country, wherever the act occurred, Mm -hmm. you can bring a court case. So if you live in Montgomery County, yes, the defendant lives in the other driver who hit you. Yeah. Lives in Prince George's County. And the accident happened in Montgomery County. You can't choose your jurisdiction as it can't be the plaintiff's jurisdiction. Really? Unless it's joint with something right, right, else. Right, right, right. But it's not just the plaintiff's. Usually, it depends on the state rule. But generally, it's where the defendant lives or where the accident, the occurred. accident occurred. So, in your case, if the accident occurred in Montgomery County, mm-hmm. Well, it's great that you live in Montgomery County because you can bring it in Montgomery County where the accident happened. Or you can choose Prince George's County okay, because the defendant lives in Prince George's County. So you can choose which one you go to and either are proper. So this is where we get into the most fun part of this, right? The choice. Now you have a choice. Yes, you do. And this can go from something as small as a traffic accident Mm -hmm. to... Why in the world did Johnny Depp and Amber Heard have a trial in Fairfax, Virginia? Virginia. It's the same concept for both, right? What are we thinking about? If we we have the option, and there's lots of concurrent jurisdictions, Mm -hmm. you know, we mentioned it before, you could go to district or circuit court in some cases. Correct. They overlap. You choose one or the other for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. Here, the sort of venue shopping of- Form shopping, yeah. Form shopping, where are we going to bring suit? It's- why a lot of businesses register in Delaware. Yeah. And then when you sue them, even though they don't have a building in Delaware, you can bring suits there. What are we thinking about if we're trying to choose a place to bring a suit? If I am a plaintiff, mm-hmm. because it is my choice where I filed the lawsuit right. as a plaintiff. So I get to look at all the options first. Yeah. The defendant does have some options to change jurisdiction, right. but it is much more limited. Okay. So once a plaintiff drops a lawsuit, files a lawsuit, it's a lot harder to move it. Mm-hmm. As a plaintiff, I am looking at what is the best possible court for me. I can't just choose any court because if I could yes. choose any court, I would always choose a particular court. Of course. Yeah. But I can't just choose any. So of the options that I'm legally allowed, yes. which one is the best for me? So if I am looking at this scenario in Montgomery County, I could do Montgomery County because the accident happened in Montgomery right. County, or I could do Prince George's County because the defendant lives there. I'm going with Prince George's County. And why is that? Because generally that county is more plaintiff friendly. See, that's fascinating. And that's going to be different for every county, every state. Every county, every state is different. And each one, it, it, it behaves in different ways, right? Yeah. The county behaves in a certain way. So as an attorney, I would get to know in my state yeah. which courts are more pro-plaintiff, mm-hmm. which are harsher penalties, right. which are pro-plaintiff, but they don't give as much money. Um, 
which I don't want to go to. So for me, if I can avoid DC, I avoid DC. Yeah. Because it's a harder system. I don't get to choose an upper and a lower court. I have only one option. Yeah. I only have superior court. DC is its own beast. I It is. I pay a lot more as an attorney, and because I pay as an attorney, mm-hmm. my plaintiff has to reimburse me. Attorney's expenses. fees and filing. Right. It, in D.C., every time I file something, I pay. Yeah. Every single time I file, I pay a fee. Right. So if an accident happened in D.C., mm-hmm. if there's any way I can get it out of D.C., I will do it. If okay. an accident happened in D.C., but I can find the, the defendant in Maryland or Virginia, I'm mm-hmm. doing Maryland or Virginia. That makes sense. And I am strongly advising my plaintiff to do the same thing. Because if I can get it in a lower court where I don't have to do depositions yeah, and I don't have to pay every time I'm filing, then I'm saving my client time and money. So you sped past something that I found very interesting. And this obviously varies by jurisdiction. But in D.C., if you're in a certain level court, you have to do depositions. Yeah, if you're like in superior court, yeah. which is the DC court, right. non-federal, the DC superior court, you can do depositions. And that's not true other places. Correct. In the state cases at least in Virginia and Maryland, if you have a lower a lower court case, a yes. district court case, you don't get depositions unless the parties agree to it, which why would you? Cuz that's expensive and time consuming. It is. The only time you get depositions is when you go to circuit court. So there are times where I will tell my client, "Okay, well you could choose to have right. a jury and go to circuit court, but you are now guaranteeing that we're having depositions. Right. We're doing more paperwork. You're spending more time. Mm-hmm. We're doing more discovery. It's much more labor and time, labor and time intensive and increase in money if we choose that. So it's like telling <laughs> my client, okay, well, we can go to district court or we can go to circuit court. And that's kind of how I look at it for DC. Mm-hmm. We could go to Virginia or we can go to DC. Right. If there's no way around it, you have to go to DC. Right. If the accident happened in DC and the defendant lives in DC, you got to go to DC. But if there are ways to avoid it, this is my thinking of, well, how am I saving my client money? Mm-hmm. How am I getting them the best possible outcome? How am I avoiding the jury process in DC? Those are the things that I'm thinking. Right. And for Johnny Depp, yes. how in the world did, did they, he get from California, right. where they live supposedly in Hollywood, yeah. to Fairfax? Fairfax. So they were in federal court, were they not? They were in Fairfax County. I was going to say, I didn't know if court. they were in federal or. State, no, they but were. That, makes, state, that they were still makes fair, sense. I, they were where I practiced. Some of my yeah. friends were in the courthouse when this was going on. Yeah. I had so many calls from my friends of, "Oh my God, I'm in the courthouse," or "I'm down the street." Right, and and why? I think why is an interesting question. It's like, hmm, why did you pick Fairfax? I don't know as much about the defamation, mm-hmm. but for defamation. You can bring a lawsuit wherever the incident. It's just like the car accident. You were defamed. The incident occurred wherever the incident. Well, if you're being defamed nationally, you can pick anywhere. 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 Absolutely anywhere. Because you were defamed. If you were defamed on the national news, Mm -hmm. in national headlines, then you were defamed anywhere that anyone has access to that information. So the U.S. is your choice. Pretty much, I don't think the, you know, people who wrote our laws were envisioning the internet and its impact on this that I just essentially so opens up jurisdiction widely. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, most people are not famous celebrities who are really going to shop the un- entire United States, but they could. Yeah, most people don't have that. I mean, most people don't use that option. In this particular case, it was decided by mm-hmm. the attorneys that this was the most favorable. Yeah jurisdiction to bring the lawsuit as the the most the best possibility mm-hmm. for winning one and for the jury system in Virginia it's six jurors. Yeah. It's a civil suit. So in California there are nine. Yeah. In Virginia there are six. And I'm going to be cynical. Shocking. I know. But I think and this is just me speculating, but I have my opinions that 
they looked at the demographics of who might make up that jury. And Fairfax seemed to be a good choice for them. I agree. It, it has to be a calculation. Yeah. If you're looking at a jury pool, who's going to be in that jury? Mm-hmm. Are they going to be sympathetic statistics. to who your client is? Mm-hmm. Will they be, I mean, this is the, the reality of it, guys, is will they be richer? Yep. Will they be more educated? And mm-hmm. Fairfax County, whether anybody likes to admit it or not, is higher on both of those those pools. Yeah. If you look at statistics and you know demographics of the U.S., look at census data. Yeah. the The rate of education in this area, especially yeah. Northern Virginia, where we are sitting, with how many colleges and universities within yeah. you know just a small amount of geography. Yeah. With all of that being it being a more liberal area mm-hmm. in Northern Virginia, a higher population of more educated people, higher population mm-hmm. of um, higher income yeah. demographics, um, more teachers, engineers, more more of the wide variety, yes. then it was seen that they might be more sympathetic yeah. to someone whose livelihood, whose high expense livelihood, Right. would be impacted, affected, lessened, damaged. And they rolled the dice, right? Yeah. I mean, we've seen it. We we saw it happen where he won. Right. Okay, so this is my question. I'm going to switch it a little bit because I do not know where Amber Heard or Johnny Depp live. Theoretically, let's California? say one of them lives in California. We'll say the other one lives in New York. Where can they sue? Uh, you can sue, again, anywhere. Truly federal or state, though, because that would be diversity. Now, there you get me. Um, I looked this up earlier federal. to double check. It. Yeah, no, tell us. So, and as then- long as people live in separate states mm-hmm. and the amount is over 75000 you can bring it in federal court. So, you know, theoretically, if I don't know where they live, but if they say my primary address is in New York, his is in California, they theoretically could go. To a federal court. Theoretically, yes, because you're right. They have diversity of jurisdiction. I have no idea what the benefit of that would be, but they could have probably. And that and that's hard to know. And that's for people higher than my pay grade. Um clearly is I that's something I don't normally consider, but it has to be. Is should I don't think they had different states. I don't think they could bring it federal because it wasn't a federal question. Right. It wasn't a constitutional issue. Right. Um, and they were same state. Yeah. And it happened across all of the, the United States, not right. just one or two. So they could choose another forum, yeah. but it would have to be a state forum. That makes sense. Um, versus a federal forum, which explains why they were in state court. Yeah, that's what I was checking because I was like, I don't actually remember. <laughs> but no, I didn't know. It's like, not a federal question. It's not a constitution. Defamation is not a constitutional question. No. It's, it's a state law question. But to me, that's interesting. And I only said that to bring us back to probably one of the most interesting things, in my opinion, about jurisdiction that I've learned in law school. It's one of those things that you hear a lot and you understand, but until someone puts it together, the idea of these circuits and circuit splits and what that means. Because I feel like you hear that term all the time, circuit split, circuit split. And it's usually like first, second, third circuit (laughs) believe something or have ruled, those circuit courts have ruled in certain ways. Yeah. And like, the other half have not. And most people's cases don't go to the Supreme Court. So the circuit courts are where it stops a lot of the time. Well, the other thing, and we're, we're going to pause today okay. on that, but let me give you a quick little answer there. And we may or may not come back to this one. We'll mm-hmm. see. We may hop on to another one um, or do a, one of the legal briefs on yeah. this particular topic, because maybe not everybody is as interested as a law <laughs> student would be. Um, but so when you say circuit court in a general discussion, yes. it would be a state circuit court. Yes. When you say circuit split in Federal. the way that you're using it as a law student, mm-hmm. it means a split among federal courts. Yes. So the U.S. circuit court for the fourth circuit. Yes. And in that case, the federal circuits, the federal state courts, mm-hmm. like the Eastern District yeah. of Virginia, is sectioned into the fourth circuit. Yes. And if an appeal is made from the Eastern District of Virginia up to 
another court, it's going to go to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. Right, right. And then from there, if it's appealed, it would go to the Supreme Court. Right. Um, because that's the federal circuit. It's the circuit of the cases. Yes. Um, so that's what happens in the federal cases, which is a little bit different than a state circuit. Absolutely. But I love that you brought that up because it's the same word being used in different, in different ways. ways. Yes. Which makes everyone more confused. Right, and if you why say nobody never, who circuits, told you this circuit stuff? Court, you have your state circuit courts, but mm-hmm. then you have these federal circuits who, and it, I don't know. It was one thing I found interesting that was actually interesting in law school about. <laughs> it is interesting because generally the federal circuits, they're on a different um, path and pattern. Yeah. They generally take up more federal questions because they're yes. federal courts. So the subject matter jurisdiction is more like the subject of the case. Yes. Is it a federal question? Yes. Um, versus personal jurisdiction, which is usually a right. geographical venue mm-hmm. question. But those are those are kind of at least the breakdown yeah. of how it goes and why you end up in there's so many random like, court intricacies. But there are. There are lots of intricacies. If you want to put in the comments that you want more information, yeah. we're happy to do it either as the legal brief or as another yes. law and I have a lot of opinions about circuit splits in the federal <laughs> system. <laughs> that is definitely another question. There's a lot to talk about there, okay? There is. There's a lot to talk about there. But for today, that's going to end you. Hopefully have a little better idea of where you might end up in court. Absolutely. If you go to court for a criminal or a civil case, at least the basics as to your general average case where you're going to end up yeah, and what options to consider. you have if you're Johnny Depp or not. <laughs> so for real, like us, follow us, subscribe to us. Yes. Um, we love your feedback. We love your comments. We would love to hear more from you. If there's a specific topic yes. um, that you'd like to hear about the law or the legal system that stumps you or that you want to yeah. hear more about that you would just rather have a little bit more in-depth conversation yeah. from the limits or the vast expanse of our knowledge, we will give you what we have yeah. and look forward to seeing you next time. We do have, we're on both podcasting sites, mm-hmm. so Spotify, Apple, all of your audio yep. and as then well. YouTube, you can see sort of our facial reactions and our, our laughing. Um, we do edit it quite a bit for this one. <laughs> We have to because of me. Yeah, no, no, not just not just I'm that. Just, not I'm just teasing. But we do have we do have some fun little um, inserts to see on YouTube. But yeah. you can usually see our dogs. We do not have our dogs with us today, and we usually do. But you can also see our dogs. Yes. So check out either or both. And um, every Tuesday we'll be here. Yes, every Tuesday tune in. We drop one every Tuesday, and we will catch you next time. But don't forget. If you ever find yourself in trouble, do contact an attorney because you never need a lawyer. Till you do.